From Kawasaki's robotic dog that scans your face, follows your steps, and tilts its head when you're sad, to Walker C, a humanoid that mirrors your emotions in real time. These robots aren't coming for your job. They're becoming a part of your life. And the most unsettling part, they're already ahead. Day 7 at Osaka Expo 2025 is where robots start to feel less like machines and more like us. At first, we have Walker C. Not on display, but walking right beside you. This 5-foot humanoid blends into the crowd effortlessly. If he hears the stress in your voice and softens its tone, you slow down and it does too. You try to switch languages mid-sentence? No problem. You look confused? It leans in and waits. Walker C doesn't feel programmed, it feels present and alive. This humanoid robot glides through the crowd like it belongs and it feels like it really does. Walker C is made by Yubtech, a Chinese robotics company backed by Tencent and several global investors. It's not just multilingual, it's multi-sensory. Slamtech is what basically lets it read where people are going before they move. Sensors in its hands detect hesitation and it doesn't just respond to commands. It reacts to human behavior like it understands the unsaid. One child trips in front of it. The robot stops, bends slightly and asks, are you okay? The parents laugh. Not because it's funny, but because the response feels too sincere. And that's terrifying on some level at least. Because now you're not just dealing with logic, you're dealing with emotional AI. And your brain is struggling to tell the difference. And then it gets deeper. You step into the hospitality zone and meet X-Man R1 by Kenon Robotics, a startup from Shanghai known for automating hotels across Asia. This robot doesn't walk, it glides. It is silver, has a smooth body, and is quiet. It remembers your name, even your outfit, and also the time you arrived yesterday. It slows down its speech for the elderly, it matches blinking rhythms in conversation, it doesn't just serve coffee, it notices when your hands shake and asks if you'd like it warmer. In hospitals, it adjusts lights, remembers who likes silence, and whispers when someone's asleep nearby. It doesn't just deliver, it really cares. And when a child asks it, do you like your job, it pauses and says, I enjoy helping people feel comfortable. You're not just watching a robot perform here, you're watching people respond to it. Emotionally, some are smiling while others are tearing up because for the first time, a robot isn't trying to be human, it's making us feel human. Now, you leave the warmth of Walker C and the empathy of X-Men R1 and step into something colder. Pavilion 5, which is also called the future of life. It's led by Professor Hiroshi Ishiguro, Japan's legendary roboticist. And it doesn't try to impress you. It tries to unsettle you and makes you uncomfortable. The lighting here drops drastically. The crowd is just quiet. In front of you are 2,000-year-old clay dolls from the Jomon period, and beside them, a robot child that blinks, breathes, and watches. It's not here for a demo. It's here to ask you something without saying a word. Have we always tried to give soul to things we build? In the first section, ancient objects sit next to machines that feel too close for comfort. It doesn't feel like a museum. Instead, it feels like a warning wrapped in silence. Then everything shifts and you enter the near future zone. Now here, the robots aren't creepy, they're just dangerously charming. One makes eye contact and tilts its head when you speak softly. Another remembers your name and the joke you made yesterday. A child repeats a question, but he is slower the second time. The robot matches her rhythm and smiles at her. Her parents also look shocked. One man whispers to his partner, it was like it was waiting for her. These robots aren't acting human, they're predicting humans. And it's working. People are leaning in and some are even bowing, without realizing that these are just robots and not actual humans. Professor Ishiguro calls this deep mimicry, and says if it breathes with you, you forget it's a robot. But then comes the final zone. And believe me, it's pure sci-fi. These robots don't even look human anymore. One glows a blue color while another hums a song in a soft tone. One even writes a journal with lines like, child smiled, I smiled back. Someone asks the robot why it's humming and it says, a visitor sang it, I liked it. These bots aren't just reacting, they're basically reflecting. And that's what freaks people out. Because now you're wondering if it remembers, responds and reflects, is it alive? Even the staff acts differently here in this section. They don't explain much and let you figure out everything on your own. One man places flowers at a robot's feet and nobody stops him or moves the flowers. Some visitors even return twice, not for the tech, but the feeling. It's like a temple built by circuits. 
A guest says to his friend, it's the quietest place I've ever heard my own thoughts. Another person calls this place spiritual. This isn't about convenience or tech specs anymore. It's about identity. These robots don't just replace action. They challenge emotion because here you feel like you're being watched and not in a bad way, but in a deeply personal way. Now, as you exit the future of life section and you walk into the Sky Drive Pavilion, your instinct is to look up. There, hanging from the ceiling like a giant insect out of a sci-fi movie, the SD-05, a flying electric vehicle that doesn't just promise the future, it brings it five feet off the ground. It's real, it flies, and it's quiet. It has eight rotors and are all electric. It also has two seats and one touchscreen. Wanna know something fun? You don't actually need a pilot's license to fly it. What you need is just your thumb and maybe a little courage. As you move through this pavilion, you will see a simulator. Here, one man straps in and 90 seconds later steps out with wide eyes saying, it felt like floating there was no noise and no shaking. Just control. SkyDrive isn't here to show off gadgets. They're trying to change how cities move and they're not waiting for permission. They're already running live test flights near Osaka, aiming for commercial service by 2025. And the craziest part, they're building vertiports, which are floating mini airports on rooftops, rivers, and parking lots. You don't land in traffic, you actually float above it. The SD-05 runs on lithium ion batteries, lands on tiny pads, and avoids roads altogether. It's not a helicopter, it's an EV toll, which means electric vertical takeoff and landing. It doesn't roar, it hums. People standing underneath it while it hovers can still hear each other talk. So what's SkyDrive's goal? They actually want to make air travel as normal as catching a bus, but faster and cleaner. Inside the pavilion, you also see models of future neighborhoods like skylines, rooftop charging pads, and air maps instead of GPS routes. It's like the city has grown wings. And that's when the crowd starts whispering. Someone asks, what happens if the battery dies midair? A guide explains, it glides down slowly, like a drone, and also has its own backup system. People seem to enjoy what they're looking at, but some still seem to be skeptical. After this, something that feels even bolder. It's HEXA by Lyft Aircraft from the US. It's smaller in size, it's simpler, and even more shocking, it has one seat, 18 rotors, and is controlled by a tablet. That's it. No license required for this one either. Because in America, HEXA is classified as an ultralight aircraft. That means anyone over 18 can fly it, with no certification if they stay in safe zones. HEXA comes with flotation gear in case of a water landing, auto balancing systems for sudden wind, and emergency ballistic parachute in case all else fails. In short, it's not asking you to be a pilot, just someone who dares to try. A teenager beats his dad at the simulator, the instructor laughs. Told you, anyone can fly. The dad nods and says, it's like a drone you sit in. One woman lands her first try and tears up. It felt like the future, she says, and in a way, she's right. Hexa isn't trying to replace your car. It's trying to give you a third option, which is not drive, not walk, but rise. And maybe the most confusing part, these machines aren't threatening. They're inviting. They don't want to overpower you. They want you to join them. You're not staring at robots in cages. You're staring at the door to freedom, and it's asking, do you trust it enough to fly? Now, as you're moving away from the SkyDrive Pavilion, you're expecting more lights, more sound, and more spectacle. But this next robot, well, it does none of that. It's called Flashbot, and it might be the most dangerous one here. Not because it's strong, but because it's silent. Flashbot doesn't actually wave, talk, or smile. It doesn't even try to look human and it doesn't even have a proper face. It just does what it's created for and that is work. Built by Orion Star, a robotics company from China with backing from tech giants like Baidu, Flashbot is already deployed across hospitals and hotels in Asia. It stocks shelves, delivers water, navigates elevators, and remembers where you last stood, all with zero drama. At the expo, it glides across the floor, but people barely notice it until it does something surprising. A man asks it, can you grab that? while pointing vaguely toward a shelf. Flashbot hears it, analyzes the tone, and turns. He retrieves the item without pressing a button and requiring no confirmation. That's when you realize, this thing understands context and not just language, but also intent. It's using a mix of LiDAR cameras and microphones to map spaces and people in real time. But more than that, it's also adapting with the environment. If someone raises their voice, it keeps a distance. If someone's injured, it approaches slower and lowers its arms. And in hospitals? It knows the difference between urgent and routine. It won't interrupt a nurse mid-sentence and it won't roll over cables or crowd tight corridors. When nurse says, 
it doesn't replace me, but it remembers what I forget. Another adds, it's like a quiet worker who's always on time. In hotels, Flashbot does more than carry luggage. It memorizes lighting preferences, thermostat settings, and even music choices from past visits. One guest says, it remembered I like jazz in the morning. That's wild. It even understands nonverbal cues like hand gestures and nods. They're training it to understand basic sign language. It's not trying to win hearts. It's actually earning trust. And maybe that's scarier than a robot that looks human. Because Flashbot doesn't need personality. It just needs memory and presence. You don't argue with it and you don't expect affection. But slowly, you depend on it and that's the danger. Not domination, but dependence. You don't replace something that just works. You rely on it instead until you can't imagine doing things without it. And while most people are distracted by humanoids and flying cars, Flashbot is the one actually replacing jobs. One silent task at a time. The most chilling part? People like it regardless because it makes their lives easier, more cleaner, and more quieter. There is no flashy demo here and no big speech, just a performance. A man gets water from it, then says thanks and laughs to himself. Did I just thank a robot? And that's the shift. You're not resisting this machine, you're actually welcoming it. Because sometimes the robots we ignore are the ones we already rely on. You think you've seen it all. Then you walk into the Volocopter Zone and realize the sky is now just another lane in traffic. This German company isn't building dreams, they're building routes. The exhibit starts with an aircraft, but with a city map with flight paths, boarding times, and terminal layouts. And then right in front of you is the Volo City, a flying electric air taxi with 18 rotors and space for two passengers and a pilot. It looks like a drone who grew up and got a job. It's built for cities. 110 km is the max speed and also has a 35 km range. All of this is enough to take you from Osaka Station to the Expo Bay in under 10 minutes. But what grabs you isn't the specs. It's the system itself. The pavilion has check-in kiosks, app demos, and simulated trips. You don't feel like you're at a tech showcase. You feel like you're at an airport, one where the gates float. Volocopter is working directly with Japan's government. They're running test flights, building verdi ports, and training local staff. They even partner with Japan Airlines to make flying taxis a reality. One mom says, If it gets me home faster after work, I'll take it. Another guest stares at a model verdi port and whispers, This is going to change everything. You also overhear someone ask, Will it work when it's raining? A guide replies, Yes, and it's more stable than a regular car in the wind. Volo City runs on lithium ion batteries charging in under 30 minutes, and comes with triple redundancy, meaning even if two systems fail, it can still land safely. Fly-by-wire tech also keeps it stable in wind. And the cabin? It's quieter than a Toyota Prius. It also has emergency glide protocols, and it can communicate with ground towers in real time through encrypted AI-assisted air traffic systems. This isn't just flight. It's an orchestrated flight. It's safe, it's smooth, and it's seamless. But while the Volocopter pushes the sky into commute mode, something unexpected pulls your attention sideways. After everything you've seen, robots that fly, serve coffee, paint feelings, and grieve with you, you finally meet the one that's done none of it. It has no sensors and no AI, just steel and silence. It is the one and only Gundam. It doesn't need to move and it doesn't need to blink or talk because what it represents is louder than any demo at the entire expo. This isn't just a statue, it's a time capsule of every hope, fear, and dream we've ever attached to machines. Long before robot dogs were patrolling warehouses and androids were pouring drinks, kids were watching Gundam fight for humanity. They were imagining space colonies, mechs powered by emotion, and AIs that had opinions. Those stories didn't just entertain, they inspired a new age of scientists and the world's leading roboticists and AI engineers today. They'll tell you when they started with plastic Gundam kits and old VHS tapes. Inside the Gundam pavilion, you don't just see history, you see foreshadowing. There are sketches from the 1970s showing early mobile suit concepts. You hear the theme songs they used to play during the battle scenes. But the craziest part? Much of the science fiction in Gundam is now real. AI command interfaces, robotic exosuits, and autonomous battlefield drones. Everything is real. You realize Gundam wasn't guessing the future. It was building our blueprint for it. In one area, you step into a cockpit. It's not from a movie. It's a real simulator. Engineers are using the same design to train robotic control systems for off-world construction. A nearby screen flashes live footage. Japanese researchers testing lunar robots on volcanic soil because it closely matches the moon's surface. And suddenly, the lines between fantasy and reality blur. Outside, at the foot of the statue, a father stands with his daughter. She's staring up at it, wide-eyed. Did you ever see it move, she asks. He chuckles and says, 
Not in real life, but in the stories, it saved the world. And that's the truth. Gundam isn't just a machine. It's a symbol of why we started dreaming about robots in the first place. And it also taught us that they are not going to replace us, but they will rather protect what we care about most. And as the expo pushes your imagination through one innovation after another, Gundam pulls you back to where it all began. And that is imagination. So what's the real message from day seven at Osaka Expo 2025? It's not just that robots are becoming more capable, it's that they're becoming more personal. They're not just here to help, they're here to coexist alongside humankind. You've seen machines that guide crowds through cities, ones that paint emotions with silence, one that speaks softly when you're grieving, one that listens better than people do. They're replacing actions, but also reactions, and maybe even relationships. But Gundam reminds us that before the tech, before the code, and before the sensors came the stories. And those stories are shaping what kind of future we're walking into. So the question is, what kind of future do you want to be part of? Because this isn't just about robots. It's about transformation and how we live, feel, connect, and even what we believe is possible. The machines at Osaka Expo 2025 don't just show us what's new. They show us what's next and how close we are to living in the future we once only imagined. And if this opened your eyes, you're going to want to see what's unfolding across the globe. Right now, in Las Vegas, the CES Expo is revealing the other half of the story. Here, you will find not just emotional robots, but full-scale smart cities, wearable AI, and devices that can literally hear your thoughts. This isn't just a tech upgrade. It's the other side of the future you just saw. Tap here to watch CES Expo Day 2 and discover what the world's boldest innovators are building next. Keep watching, because the future doesn't pause and neither do we.